In July of 1975, a man hit a seven-foot-tall, reddish-brown creature with his car, but the beast got up and chased him. I have never told anyone about this because I didn't want to hear the jokes. But it was mid-July of 1975. I was heading toward the beach in my sports car, top down with the music blasting. It was around 8.45 p.m., so it was still light out, but heading towards dusk. I had my headlights on and I was cruising at about 60 miles an hour when I rounded a corner and there in the road stood this large, hairy thing. I slammed on my brakes and swerved around it, but I must have glanced it because it bounced over the passenger side of my car. I slid the car around and stopped where my headlights were about halfway on this thing. It got up and came at me. I was about 25 feet away from the thing and I could smell it. It smelled horrible. The smell hung in the air like a wet blanket. This thing was about seven to seven and a half feet tall. It had reddish brown matted looking hair. Its face was hairless and this thing looked pissed. So I put the car in reverse, backed up and threw the car in drive and took off. As I was spinning around, I looked in the rearview mirror and it was right on my car's rear end. I heard a loud bang and about that time my car caught traction and I took off. I left the creature running down the road after me. I have never been so scared in all my life. After I got to my destination, I checked my car. The passenger side rear quarter panel was dented in and it had hair on it. My rear spoiler was shattered where he had hit the rear of my car. I told my friends, family, and police and the insurance that I'd hit a stray cow. But it took weeks to get that smell off the outside of my car, and the inside still had the smell. It was awful. It was like sewage mixed with something else. I was 27 then. I'm 38 now. I've not been down that road since, and I'll drive 45 to 50 miles out of my way to avoid going that route. A hairy creature eating my corn. In the summer of 2009, a deer hunter had a sighting of a large creature while checking his corn pile in Rose Hill, North Carolina. The hunter writes, While checking my deer bait pile behind my home in the woods, I walked up on a seven to eight foot tall, stinky, hairy creature eating my corn. It was sitting down when I first saw it, with its back to me. It heard me and it stood up and faced me about 25 yards away. I froze as we stood there staring at each other for a few minutes. I was terrified, but I acted like I wasn't. It seemed to decide that I was no threat, and it walked away deeper into the woods. I had a pistol with me, but I didn't feel threatened enough to kill it. I don't believe the 38 that I had would have stopped it anyway. I have a feeling if I'd have shot it, it would have ripped me from limb to limb. Bigfoot Scene Near Fort Knox A firefighter writes, I wanted to share my experience that I had about 15 years ago. I lived in a rural area southwest of Louisville, Kentucky. I was a firefighter for a small volunteer department. We got a call from the fire department at Fort Knox Base, and they told us they were fighting a fire and it was heading our way. I was in a four-wheel drive field unit going on a dirt road on the inside of the border. When we came around the bend, it was smoky, but you could easily see something standing in the middle of the road, looking towards us. We were about 150 to 200 feet away when it let out a deep, and I mean deep, bellowy grunt. Then I saw a medium-sized creature step out of the tree line with two smaller ones. The family group of Bigfoot quickly rushed north and over the fence and out of sight. The first one was about seven to eight feet tall with matted brown or black hair. I couldn't tell how much it weighed. The medium-sized one was definitely a female because of the way it acted towards the little ones. It was easily six and a half feet tall with a slender build. The small ones were about five to six feet tall and skinny. Bigfoot drags a deer into a cave in West Texas. I was in West Texas and I was deer hunting. The closest city to me was Comstock. I was sitting in a Bronco enjoying the view, but across the canyon I saw this blackish-brown creature dragging a deer carcass into a cave. I grabbed a pair of binoculars and zoomed in on the creature. I could see that it was very dark skinned and had a flat nose, and its eyes were a bright amber color. It had very thick hair around the torso and legs, but lightened up around the face, and it had large ape-like lips. The terrain in that area was rocky, so it had to be very good at climbing and maneuvering. I would say I observed this thing for about five minutes. It was about 200 yards away, but I did see the creature go into the cave. The cave was up on at least a five-foot-high ledge, and it just stepped up there like it was climbing stairs. Now, the deer was about the size of a smaller elk. This was the biggest buck I'd ever seen. 
It was at least five feet in length, and it was pretty wide. I would say this creature had to be at least seven feet tall. The shoulder length would have been about four to five feet, very, very wide shoulders. The creature's face was very ape-like and did not resemble a human at all. The face had lots of scars, and it looked very similar to a gorilla in the eyes, but the jaws did not extend like the face of a gorilla or a chimp. It looked similar to a human in the jaw area. The teeth were that of an ape, though, and the skin was very, very dark brown. Bigfoot seen in Hardman, Oregon. The sighting occurred in the West Reserve in the Blue Mountain Range, just south of Highway 207. My background is a retired police officer, so you must understand at the time I did not want to be called a nut if you get my drift. This is why I told no one about this until now. It was about 11.30 p.m. in late October or early November of 1980. The same year that Mount St. Helens had erupted in the great state of Washington. I can still remember everything about this incident like it was yesterday. My truck was pulling up the hill best it could at top speed of about 25 to 30 miles an hour. The Bigfoot I saw was medium brown in color. I could see all of him as he was very close. His eyes were more of a glowing red color and he had shaggy long hair. He was standing on the right side of my truck, just off the road, where you might see a warning sign like a curve or hill up ahead. I really didn't pay much attention until I was about 50 feet away from him, and then he stepped up near the yellow fog line, still on my right side. I have no idea what he was planning to do. I couldn't tell if he was standing there waiting to cross the road or what. Then I finally got close enough to see what he was, and it was too late. I tried as best as I could, but I couldn't get the truck to go any faster. I was petrified. When I passed the creature, I remember looking at his head movement and thinking it was just like mine. He was looking at me just as much as I was looking at him. There was no movement like any hostile actions or jumping. We were just looking at each other. His eyes seemed to be a reddish color. I don't know if the red color was from the eyes or what. This thing was about eight feet tall, maybe more, maybe less. At that point, honestly, I didn't care. He had long but shaggy hair, and it hung down about three to four inches in various places all over his body. I'm not sure if it was a male or a female. I didn't see any boobs, but at the time, I didn't see a penis either. But for some reason, I've always called it a him. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. This is the first time I've ever told my story to anyone, except to my wife. A hunter is stalked by a Bigfoot in North Dakota, 1962. While coming back from a hunting trip outside of Minot, North Dakota, in April of 1962, a friend and I were followed when we were returning back to the trailer park where we lived. After walking quite a distance out of the prairie, I had the distinct feeling that something or someone was following us. Eventually, I became so uncomfortable that I looked over my shoulder, and at a distance of about 50 yards away, I saw what I thought was a great ape. Our eyes met, and this thing stood up on its hind legs when it saw that I saw it. All I had on me was a single-shot twenty-two rifle, so shooting it was out of the question. I was able to get a pretty good look at this thing. It had long, black, shiny, oily-looking hair, and I could see that it had hair all over its body as it stood up off of all fours onto its hind legs. There was no hair on its face above its nose or the palms of its hands, and this thing had huge, long arms. I can't overemphasize enough the malevolent look this thing had on its face and seemed to be trying to convey to me. As soon as this thing started moving in our direction, we both ran as fast as we could and never looked back. When visualizing some far-flung regions of the world that could harbor a hereto unknown species of terrifying monkey monster, Danville, New Hampshire is not the first place that springs to mind. Yet for two weeks in September 2001, this small New England hamlet was the scene of several scary encounters with a giant baboon-like beast that has since become known as the Devil Monkey of Danville. Tales of this terrifying primate have been around since the 1930s, and sporadic reports seem to pepper diverse locations along with both east and west coasts of the United States and Canada. But what is the zoological significance of such sightings, and do their gelato-like proportions indicate a baboon-like escapee, or perhaps even that a small feral population of these aggressive primates has become established in parts of the United States and Canada? What's in a name? Coined by Mark A. Hall, also known as Giant Monkey and Nalusophilia. Monstrous Measurements. Bipedal and Quadrupedal. 
resembling a large baboon or dog three to eight feet tall, covered in light brown to black hair. Sometimes has a patch of white fur extending from its neck to its belly. Pointed ears, baboon-like or dog-like muzzle, large canines and strong chest. Short forelegs with claws, muscular, almost kangaroo-like hind legs. Large feet, has a long bushy tail that's sometimes hairless. Terrifying tracks, three-toed tracks, toes appear to be rounded. 12 to 15 inches in length. Beastly behaviors. Very aggressive to humans and dogs. Walks bipedally and quadrupedally. Can leap up to 20 feet in a single bound. Very vocal, possibly territorial. Emitting a range of barks, cries, and screams, often heard echoing through the Appalachian Mountain regions, and that bear a resemblance to territorial calls of other known primate species. Strong jaws, long canines, and razor-sharp claws, which it uses to bring down its prey, often attacking its torso, face, and other vulnerable areas. Deadly diet, said to kill livestock, pets, and small game. Hairy habitat, British Columbia, Appalachian Mountain region of the United States. Devil monkey sightings are also reported in Kentucky, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Scary sightings. 1930s, Kentucky is reputed to have experienced a rash of devil monkey sightings as far back as the 1930s. 1934, several eyewitnesses described seeing a mysterious beast that could leap across fields with lightning speed in South Petersburg, Tennessee. 1959, the Boyd family were driving through the mountains near their home in Saltville, Virginia, when their vehicle was attacked by a monkey-like creature that rushed at the car, grabbing at it with its front paws. The Boyd's daughter, Pauline, described the terrifying attacker, which left three claw-like scratches on their car, saying, It had light, taffy-colored hair, with a white blaze down its neck and underbelly. It stood on two large, well-muscled back legs and had shorter front legs and arms. She went on to tell another similar story that occurred shortly after in the same region, saying, Several days after this incident, two nurses from the Saltville area were driving home from work one morning when they were attacked by an unknown creature who ripped the convertible top from their car. 1973. A devil monkey was thought to be responsible for the slaughter of several cattle in Albany, Kentucky. 1979. Several devil monkey encounters occurred in rural Georgia, with one female eyewitness describing it as, quote, the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It had a tail like a beaver's, but it's bushy, and a face like a dog. End quote. 1997. On June 26, 1997, Debbie Cross saw a three- to four-foot hairy animal with long arms and a short tail outside her rural home near Duncansville, Ohio. It walked on its knuckles as it moved away from her. 2001. Nine locals reported seeing a strange primate, while others reported hearing its eerie cries near Danville, New Hampshire. A local fire chief who spotted the ape-like animal in the pre-dawn hours one night in September said, quote, it jumped out of the trees. As soon as it hit the ground, he took a giant leap and went back where it came from. The first thought I had was, that's nothing that's native to here. End quote. He described the creature as being like a primate with a reddish-brown coat, razor-sharp claws, and a dog-like muzzle. Over the following two weeks, parents kept their children at home after sunset. After several search parties failed to find the animal, the sighting stopped and the creature was not seen again. It was generally assumed that this was an escaped animal that had likely been recovered by its owner. 2006. An anonymous witness claimed that he returned to his Chicago home with his family one evening to find a devil-like creature violently attacking his six-year-old Labrador dog and stated that the animal was an unusual combination of a monkey, wolf, and devil with long fangs and a monkey-like tail and extremely bright glowing eyes. The man who snapped a photo of the beast, which apparently was frightened by the flash bulb of the camera, sprang to its hind legs and ran, escaping through the open door behind them. He also claimed that numerous pets had gone missing from the neighborhood leading up to the sighting, that another individual had seen an identical beast hanging from a local tree by its tail. Beastly Evidence Derrider Roadkill In 1996, Barbara Mullins was driving down a hot and dusty asphalt Louisiana highway called Highway 12. 
when she noticed a strange creature dead on the side of the road. Pulling over to get a closer look at the animal, she was astonished to see a recently deceased animal, about the size of an adult St. Bernard, and covered in thick brown hair. Curiously, she noticed that what she had first taken to be a dog possessed ape-like feet that extended from its bulky body. It had small pointed ears and a very simian-like appearance. Luckily, she was equipped with a camera and she took a picture of the bizarre beast. On September 5th, the De Quincey News published a story about Barbara's strange find, speculating that it could be a chupacabra or even a devil monkey. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries later examined the photo, stating that they believed that it was a deceased small breed of domestic dog called a Pomeranian. Many were quick to point out the size differentiation between this breed and a St. Bernard, although the photo is seemingly lacking anything apart from the patchy clumps of grass surrounding the animal, which could provide a reliable object for scale, which sadly does nothing to aid us in ascertaining the size of this alleged cryptid carcass. Beastly Theories The term NAPES, an abbreviation of North American Apes, was first coined by the cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman in 1962. Inspired by a curious track he discovered and cast in a dry creek bed of Stevens Creek near Decatur, Illinois. This assumed American ape is tailless and thought to belong to a yet unclassified genus that may include cryptids like the Florida skunk ape and the yeti. However, the descriptions of the devil monkey, with its baboon-like muzzle and tail, do not match the ape-like physiology of the nape, or any known ape species, and it's far too large to be any known species of monkey. Therapithecus oswaldi Could an extant species related to Therapithecus oswaldi be roaming the Appalachian Mountains? It seems unlikely. Besides the ancient date of their demise, likely brought about by human conflict and predation, this fossil gelated, despite its widespread distribution in southern, east, and north Africa, Spain, Italy, and India, is not known to have existed in the New World. Feral Monkey Colonies Many people believe that the Danville Devil Monkey in particular was an escaped primate, most likely a baboon. Certainly, the numerous public encounters with this beast, followed by its sudden disappearance, seem indicative of an escaped pet running amok for a few weeks before being quietly recovered by its owner. However, several eyewitnesses remain unwavering in their convictions that the animal that they encountered does not correspond with any known primate species. There have been examples of escaped monkeys forming feral colonies in parts of the U.S. Indeed, Florida, the unofficial invasive species capital of the world, provides more extreme examples of this phenomenon. With its established colonies of squirrel monkeys, rhesus monkeys, and even troops of capuchin monkeys, which have become endemic in the state within the last few decades. Who's to say whether small groups or other species like baboons or even the odd mandrel might have escaped and are perhaps living undetected in other parts of the United States? Killer Kangaroos It has been suggested that escaped kangaroos could be responsible for the devil monkey encounters and that there may be feral populations living in several U.S. states. Kangaroos are great escape artists, their powerful hind legs and feet giving them the ability to jump high or to cover 25 feet in a single leap. Phantom kangaroos have been reported quite regularly in the United States since the 1930s, and this steady stream of escapees could certainly explain several purported devil monkey encounters.